Hello everybody and welcome to lesson five of our history week, our final lesson, and it's about life in the Middle Ages. Our learning objectives will be to understand the feudal system and how peasants lived, and to create an ABAB poem based on life in the Middle Ages. Okay, what I want you to do first is to write your date down at the top and underline it with a ruler, and then finally uh, to write the learning objective, and that will be LO to understand the feudal system and how peasants lived. Okay? Right, good luck with that, uh, and unpause the video when you're ready to begin the lesson. Okay, all done? Let's have a look. The feudal system then, what does this mean? Have you ever heard of the feudal system? Well, it was pretty much how life used to work back in the Middle Ages. What do you think that picture shows there? We've got the king at the top, we've got barons and bishops, knights and peasants. What do you think it shows? Take a moment to think and then write down a sentence about what you think that might mean. Okay, once you've got your sentence, unpause the video and then we'll find out together what it means. Right, well, let me tell you. The feudal system was the way of life back then. We had the king on top, in charge of everything, top of the mountain, and then the barons below him, then the knights, and then at the very bottom, the least important, the peasants, who worked hard on the land to provide food and money and services for everyone who was above them. And there were more peasants than any knights or barons or, or the king. There were lots of peasants back then, and the peasants were often referred to as the poor people as well, who worked on the land. Okay, so the king, he would grant land to barons, okay? In turn, he wanted the barons to make money with that bit of land that he gave them. And then what money they made, they had to pay parts of it back to the king so that he could use it for whatever he wanted. He could take that money and he could take it to battle in France and uh, and raise money that way. And as we saw with King John, he loved money. Um, then we had knights and knights had to fight for their baron. The baron would own the land or, or a lord would own the land and the knights would have to fight for him. And if the king wanted knights to go on the crusades or go to France, then the baron had to give his knights up to the king so that they could fight for their country. The knights had to fight for anyone who was the king or the barons or the lords, depending on who they fought for. And then below that, we had the peasants and the peasants worked on the baron's land and they had to grow food and provide services and they were taxed heavily. And it was a really hard way of life. We'll learn more about the peasants as we go on through this lesson. So that was the feudal system then. Let's see which members of the feudal system said these things. We've got the king, we've got a baron, we've got a knight, and we've got a peasant. Which one of them said which thing? So we've got, I'm not keen on the system because I only get a small piece of land. Who do you think said that? Do you think the king said that? Or a baron? Or a knight? Was it a peasant? I'm not keen on the system because I have to fight for my local baron. Which one of them said that? I like the system because I have many peasants working on my land. I don't think it's going to be a peasant then. Which one of them is it? And then finally, I like the system because it means I can control the country. Which one is it? Okay, have you chosen? Let's have a look. You don't need to write it down, it's just a game. Let's have a look at who has said what. Well, of course, the peasant only gets a small piece of land, so they wouldn't like the system. The knight has to fight for their local baron. The king can control the country, of course, and the baron has many peasants working on his land. OK, so next up, we are going to find out what a peasant is. And look, there's a peasant woman and a peasant man hard at work. OK, what I'm going to do now is play a video and then we're going to see exactly what life in a medieval village was like in the Middle Ages. Life in a medieval village, Western Europe. 
During the Middle Ages, the majority of people lived in rural villages rather than urban cities or large towns. But what was everyday life like in a medieval village? The truth is, like many periods in history, medieval life differed from village to village and from person to person. Life in a medieval village depended on someone's class and role in society. Generally speaking, though, the medieval village was the domain of the peasant. Peasants were the lowest class of society, but they actually made up the majority of the entire population. For this majority, the village was the center of their universe. They were born, lived, worked, attended church, were married, had children, and died all within the same area. Today, we might imagine a medieval village as a line, square, or several little rows of houses, with a tavern and a church. But the medieval village actually took on many forms. It could be several houses clustered together, but a village could also be several scattered hamlets and farmsteads, far apart but under the control of a lord. Most villages would have been houses concentrated around a lord's manor, that is, an administrative device by which a lord charged rents and... Hello everyone! Did you, hello, did you enjoy that video about me and my people, the peasants? Let's learn some more from me, a peasant. Well, most people in the feudal system were peasants who spent their entire lives as farmers working in the fields. The responsibility of peasants was to farm the land and provide food supplies to the whole kingdom. In return for land, I had to work to serve the night or pay rent for the land. Anyway, most of the people who lived in England lived in the country during the Middle Ages and they could be described as peasants like me. You can see the hay I've just been working, I've had a long day's work. And we had to work the land to produce food, fuel, wool and other things that you need. There was even a social order that divided the peasantry, so I'm not even the lowest kind of peasant that you can imagine. There's people below me that even I can, I'm above and have to do more work than. Right, there's some gaps there. You can fill them in if you like. I'll give you a moment to do them. Copy them out in your book. And then, once you've got the answers, then we can move on. You can always move back the video, because we didn't have videos back then, you know, when I was a peasant back working on the land. Let's move on. Three, two, one. Okay, now this is a little story for me, and that, this is why I'm here today. Life was very hard for me, a eh, peasant. King Richard I was always raising taxes to fight battles in France and to raise an army for the Crusades. He demanded that the barons give him more money, so the barons worked us peasants harder than ever, and took all of our money to pay for wars in other countries, while we starved and struggled to provide food and comfort for our poor families. But we loved our Lionheart. He was the bravest king we ever had. He fought for the Holy Lands because we have faith in Christianity and the church, but Saladin just proved to be a bit too strong for him. Anyway, his evil brother King John took over and he raised the taxes even more. He stole from the church and he was cruel and wicked. We all hated him. That's why we needed a character like Robin Hood to rob from the greedy rich king and sheriffs who collected the money that they had stolen from the poor. We needed Robin Hood because he gave us hope. Hope that it would be a rat in the end. God bless you, Robin Hood. So where did we live then? Well, there's a picture of my house over there. We, we, we didn't call it house though, it was hut. It was called an hut. Inside the hut, a third of the area was penned off the animals which actually lived in there with us. Can you imagine? A fire burned right in the, right in the center of the hut and the air was permanently eye-wateringly smoky, so my eyes are all red a little here. And the furniture was just a couple of stools, a trunk for bedding, and a few cooking pots. That's all we needed to survive in the village, you see? Now, what you need to do now is, is make a map about what it's like to live in the village, you see? So what I just told you about the huts, the cooking pots, and the animals, I need you to put that down in that mind map there. So I want you to copy that down. 
and then put your own ideas into it. So pause the video and then when you're ready, we will continue. Three, two, one. I hope you got a great mind map there. Okay, what did we eat? Well, we mainly had veg. I'm a very healthy peasant, you see. We mainly have vegetables and anything that could be gathered from the fields, like nuts, berries, and nettles. And the usual drink was weak home brew beer. Oh, I like a drop of that. And honey provided a sweetener. If we ate bread, then we didn't eat white bread, but we had black rye bread because it was easier to make, you see? And the most difficult time was late spring when the place we used to went to get our food was running out and we hadn't had the harvest. It had been a long time. And if we had a poor harvest, then we had even less food and people might starve to death. I was very lucky, you see. Lots of my friends died because they couldn't get enough food. Anyway, this time it's your turn. You need to fill out this mind map about what peasants' food was like. So you can rewind the video for help and then you fill this out. So I'll give you a moment to pause and then come back in three, two, one. Let's move on. What did we wear then? Well, it was a bit like this really. We'd wear a rough tunic. I want what I would like you to do actually, have a look at all of this about what we would what we would wear. Yes. Read it through, pause the video. Good. And then come back in three, two, one. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to make a mind map. Yes, we are. So peasants' clothes. Men, rough tunic with a hood. And fill in the rest of it with different things you can have. So now you should have three different mind maps with our food, our clothes, and how where we used to live as well. Okay, so using all of those mind maps, we've made our definition of a peasant. And the story told by my, by me, myself, we're going to make a little poem, you see? And we're going to match the rhyming words. Now, what is an ABAB -A -B rhyme scheme poem? In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll hand back to your teacher, because he's coming back in now, and he can tell you all about it. I've been a peasant. Bye-bye, everybody. OK, I'm back. Did I, did I miss anything? So some strange bloke came out just as I came in. It looked like a peasant. Anyway, um, yeah, we need to make a poem about peasants. And uh, what is an ABAB -A -B rhyme scheme poem? So A and B. Well, we're going to see if we can match the rhyming words. We've got hood, agree, tree, good. Can you match them? Let's see. Hood rhymes with good, tree rhymes with agree. So we're going to put those words at the end of our rhyme just to make one up, okay? Let's see what we do with them. Yeah, A is good and hood, B is agree and tree. So it says, peasants all love Robin Hood. He sat up high in a tree. R King John, always up to no good, doesn't wait for the barons to agree. Okay, I wonder if we can make that more, more rhyme a bit better, actually. Peasants all love Robin Hood. He sat up high in a tree. King John, always up to no good, doesn't wait for the barons to agree. Okay, and look, that's A, B, A, B, because you've got A, B, A, B. The A's rhyme and the B's rhyme. So it's only four lines, you see? So try and make your own with different rhyming words at the end. You don't have to use my words at all. You can use any words that you want that rhyme. And I know that some of you are very good at that from what I've heard so far. So pause the video now and try and make your own A, B, A, B rhyme scheme peasant poem. We'll move on in three, two, one. Okay, so what have we learned today? We've learned all about life in the Middle Ages, okay? And there were lots of different jobs back then, and there's a lot of information about it there. Have a think about which one you would like to be if you were living in the Middle Ages. There's lots of detail about what each one does. And then maybe you could even draw a picture of yourself as one and say what you had to do. Okay, finally... What did you enjoy most about this history week? It's been a lot of fun doing it, I can tell you. So tell me what you enjoyed the most and why. Anyway, next week we're going to have a new topic. It's going to be his, it's going to be geography now that we've done history. And we'll have a lot of fun with that too. So have a good weekend and I hope you enjoyed history week.